What's going on, YouTubers? Well, I'm here in North Carolina, and the hurricane is coming back through out this way, I guess. It's really just going to be a lot of rain and storm for us. And I got a flat tire this morning, too, it looks like. It's got a slow leak. Looks like maybe now it's a little faster of a leak. <laughs> but anyway, it's been raining like you wouldn't believe. We got a tree limb down by the car here. I pulled that under there just because I got to make room over there. So anyhow, we all going to make us a hurricane run video sometime today. Might as well. But I'm taking the truck in here. I got the uh, my front diff servo wasn't working yesterday. So that's what we're about to check into. See what's up with that. Let me carry this in the house. Well, all right. We're going to go ahead and start seeing what's the deal with this servo not shifting and uh, i was gonna show you here you know my selfie sticks that i run stuff like that this is my best one it doesn't extend real far it goes out a couple feet but i can point it toward the ground and lean it back have my phone leaning back all that stuff and it's got a hex bluetooth feature i'm thinking why do you need a bluetooth feature for a selfie stick i understand you don't have to plug the little wire in because i think my other's the other one I got right here that I used to use a long time. I never did you plug the wire in. It's got a button you can push. Yeah, but you got to plug like a headphone jack into your phone to make it take the picture. So I was like, well, I, why do you need Bluetooth to go that far? And then I realized just a few minutes ago, I did that and this thing comes out. Didn't even know. Didn't read the instructions, obviously. So now it makes a little more sense to have the Bluetooth button. I might actually connect to that, you know, use it to pause my video or whatever when it's on here why not pretty cool anyway i just thought i'd bring that up these uh selfie sticks right here this one it's like five dollars at walmart this one here was probably five more than that at the time when i bought it, it this one extends a lot farther but the only downfall to this one is the fact that you can't lean it back no further than that it'll lean forward if i hold, hold that i can lean it forward but not back no more and the point is, is when you got your phone controller way up here and you're walking and you got that extended all the way out, you're pointing at the ground with that one. This one, I can at least point my phone straight still, you know, when I'm angling at the ground. So I can get a low down shot of the truck, whatever. So $5 at Walmart, I'm going to go pick up about two, two more, three more of them. Because I don't, well, the controller's in the car out there right now, so I can't show you how I got them. But this one here, I like this because it's thin so far. It just doesn't have that angle. But I think my other controller, I got a foam mount up here. You don't get a very good angle with that one at all. Not down low. It's great when you're running up on an obstacle up high or something. You can get a good shot. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Just thought I'd show that. A lot of people are asking me how am I filming and driving at the same time. And I just, I mount what I can mount to my controller. This is actually hot glued on here. I usually have tape around it in case the hot glue comes off when it's warm outside, but I haven't even had to, to be honest. So I had to take tape off to get my batteries out the other day. And I just didn't know this had this Bluetooth feature. It's kind of neat. I can put that up on my remote. I can put it somewhere that I can just hit it with a finger if I want or, you know, whatever. I can put it in my pocket, stuff like that kind of neat so anyway i'm going to go ahead and take a look at this servo and we're going to call the tracks the support team and i'm going to let you know if they help me or not well all right now the servo's burned out i've done taking a few things apart i made sure it wasn't unplugged it's burned out so i'm going to just unplug it for now i got the diffs locked in full time i'm going to wrap a rubber band around it so i can drive it it's not a big deal as far as that goes now, I have to give a huge shout out to Traxxas and their support team for making life so easy because, I, I mean, the truck's obviously not that old. I've had it for two weeks, I think. So, the name been out but a month or something like that. So, anyway, I called the 1888 Traxxas, and that's it, 188 Traxxas. 1888 tracks us let me get that right so y'all ain't dialing 188 so anyway i dialed them up called them they asked me what the deal was i told them i bought the brand new high trail two weeks ago and the front locking diff servos burned out basically 
And I did mention that I had a small YouTube channel, and I, I love their product. Never had too many issues out of it. First time I've had to call their customer support for anything. And the man is sending me a servo straight out. He didn't even... He told me normally they would ask you to send in the old one, stuff like that. He said he's not even going to do that. He's just shipping me out a servo. So it's like, what, the, the 29th? No, today's the 30th, I think. So now the main thing is how long will it take to get here? But that's just so cool. They didn't ask me no questions. I mean, it was the easiest thing I've ever done as far as customer service. You know, I thought they were going to be like, well, what did you do, this and that? Or some people say you have to send them a video. Sometimes you might have to. I don't know. I honestly just told him that the servo quit, and he said, okay, I will see if we have one. He typed on the computer, said, yes, we have one. I will get it sent out to you. What's your address? It was that easy. So thanks again, Traxxas. That is the coolest thing. I mean, you can't ask for better customer service than that. So now I understand why you guys like to buy your shit new. That right there made it worth it because that's, what, 30 bucks. 27 28 dollars plus tax for a servo and i went and bought a spectrum servo put it in my wife's truck it works fine but i i got it for 20 dollars. but i had to customize everything to get it in there it did not just go straight in plus the wire stuck out the side instead of the bottom and i had to trim the plastic for that fit so saving that 10 bucks was not worth it i would i would have paid the 30 if they wouldn't have sent me one anyway so thanks again traxxas now we're here in north carolina we got the hurricane coming through so it's you see out there it's, it's a raining the winds are whipping so we don't have a lot of options I, I would like to go down under the bridge out of the rain today and get a run in with this in the gen 8 so anyway i have to run to the store now just wanted to give a big shout out to traxxas and when i get back maybe we'll go crawling somewhere well, all right, guys, we're over here at the Noose River, and look, in one day, she's up, and we are just now starting to get what's going to happen. So, here we are. We're doing hurricane run. We're just going to run up this little path here. There's some people under the bridge right now, but we still might go try to work it around down at the bridge, maybe over here before it starts raining too hard, but I just wanted to get me a hurricane run in, so... My front diffs are locked full time because my servo burned out. But like I said, Traxxas support team was awesome. They have me a new servo on the way. We just gotta see how long it's gonna take. So now we're just gonna cruise around and just have a little fun on the way back to the car, I guess. The Gen 8 has a lot of good upgrades in it right now, so she should do okay. The steering in it sucks, but other than that, it's good. As you can tell, it's a cruiser. Might have to go around them big stumps there. Mine's a little bigger. All right. Yeah, the turning radius is because the diffs are always locked in. You can't unlock them, so it, it's not the best. Let me get the camera right. And She's still performing good. The Desert Lizard shocks have made it to where it's not tipping over all the time. Even on that side hill right there, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, I hate when you get in all these vines, you just have to drive over them, I guess. Oops, hold on. These vines are hardcore. There we go. I'll just drag them with me. Well, let's see if we can kind of hit a few rocks right here, I guess. It looks kind of fun. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be a good test on the side hill with them shocks. See, both of these trucks have a, cap a bad side hill capability, so it's kind of, you know, a fair between the two competition, I guess. Oh, see what I mean? Yeah. I only rode because I was looking at her truck and I tried to cut uphill. <laughs> Guess we'll go this way. All right, let's see. I just let it raw. I knew it would go back to his wheels. 
There's a little spot up here that looks fun. Just go ahead and follow. I forgot to take my ball hitch out. But... And you got a lot better tire than I do. Oops. And now I'm just going to come right back down. All right, go ahead. Now you're bottoming out on the center. You got to straddle that rock. Yeah, that way will work. There you go. Very nice. A lot better than it used to be. All right. You done? Let's go see if we can run under the bridge or not. I guess they're going to go under the bridge. You follow them, they barely fit. It's a tight run. If they can do it, we can do it. I guess we're gonna go over and get a little muddy. I'm gonna go through the same trail for a second. Get under the bridge, you won't need your umbrella. Your umbrella, umbrella. There's some stanky water, I bet, right here. Oh, it looks, yeah, it's really pleasant. Uh, yeah, deep too. Look at that. <laughs> Stay right where you're at, you might not drop. I guess we're getting a little muddy today. All right, follow me. Time to get a little mud on the tires. Uh -oh. Let's just see what's in here. <laughs> you got her. <laughs> nah, well, I kind of came under the bridge here, found a little mud hole spot. My wife didn't really want to come. Ooh, some bloody toilet paper there too. We just won't get that in view, I guess. Hey, that's pretty cool. I don't know how deep it is out there though, that's the thing. Well, all right. We're just gonna go down this little path that truck was just <laughs> going down. And we're just going to go a little bit this way. Come on. Slow down. You don't have to keep that. I can go right through the middle, no problem. All right, we got us a nice puddle. As long as that truck don't come back and run us over, we're good. See how deep it is. Holy crap. Are we gonna lose signal? I'm gonna go ahead and come around this way. <laughs> Look at that. That's deep. This is the high trail edition. <laughs> that would have been over the roof of the uh, Gen 8. I'm glad we didn't take it. <laughs> We're going to do that one more time because it was fun. We're going to just go down there and come back. It's all the way, it's starting to float. <laughs> the bed floats right there. That's right. All right, I gotta hurry up. My phone's getting wet and everything. Oh, yeah. Coming down good now. 
Yep. He's a pretty wild one right now. That's what you do get when you're out in a hurricane. Alright. Let's see what happens here. Get under this bridge. Uh -oh. Alright, my phone just about stopped. So we're heading to the truck so we can wrap this up. So again guys, please like and subscribe. Until next time. Peace. We gotta get a car wash before we go. Oops. One at a time though. Hold on, we're hooked. There we go, back up. All right, we gotta get these nasties off of here. All right, next. That one's got a phone mounted to it, so that ought to be good. <laughs> so, so all right guys. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, peace.